You probably already know that in many places around the country, it was daylight savings this weekend, the weekend where we adjust our clocks by an hour, either forward or backwards, depending on what time of year it is. And, and this is the one that works well for us in the evening, at least here in the Midwest, because in the Midwest, we've been in winter for many, many months and it gets dark very, very early, but now we adjust our clocks forward. We spring forward on our clocks and now suddenly we have an extra hour of daylight every night, which makes our nights just a little bit more pleasant, a little bit more enjoyable, maybe staying up a little bit later because there's a little bit more daylight to enjoy. Works well in the evening, but not so much <laughs> in the morning. I don't know about you, but if you go through the day, if you're in a place where there's daylight savings, there's a bit of an adjustment period in the mornings. Because now if you're getting up at the same time on the clock, your body is not feeling like it's the same time at all. It's feeling like it's, it's an hour earlier and it takes a little bit of time to adjust to that. So you might, you might wake up for a couple of days feeling a little bit more tired, a little bit more fatigued, need a little bit more coffee to get into the day, but it can be really, really tiring. But you can put up with it because you know what, by the end of the day, you're going to be able to enjoy a little bit more daylight and, and eventually you're going to, you're going to adjust and it's going to be okay. That may or may not describe your feelings toward daylight savings, but I thought of it this morning as I read through Deuteronomy chapter 10, because there's something in there that can make us feel kind of worn out. It's the string of commands that God gave to the Israelites where he told them to make sure you walk in my ways and, and love me with all your heart and, and follow me with all your soul and do everything that I have commanded you. Make sure you do these things and make sure you do them well. He has like four different commands, four different ways that he says it, just to impress on them how important it is to follow God's law and everything that you do in all of your heart and all of your soul and all that you have. And sometimes you can get tired of doing that. Not tired in the sense that you don't want to do it anymore, but the fatigue that comes from you go out there ready to do your best and people sometimes push back at you really, really hard. You want to serve God with all your heart, with all your soul, but not everybody's ready to applaud you for that. And that can wear you down. It can wear you down when you have a pretty good idea of what it's supposed to look like to serve God with all your heart, with all your soul and follow his laws. but. But then your day blows up and it throws in half a dozen unexpected challenges that you didn't, that you didn't see coming and, and you were already this close to losing it at the beginning of the day. And it just makes it a little bit harder to, to keep up with your strength. And then of course, there's, there's you. The fatigue that sets in when Again, we want to serve God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, but in a moment of weakness, temptation got the best of you. Or you suddenly realize, looking back on the last week or two weeks or three weeks or whatever it was, that you haven't been as attentive to God's laws, to God's word, as, as you know you should be. And if you didn't even see it happening, then how in the world can you be as attentive to God's law and God's word as you know you ought to be? There's something that God says at the end of all those commands that's really important for us to remember as we look to do our best to carry all of them out. He tells them to do all these things so that it may go well for you so that it may go well for you. And you can take that in two ways, both of which are true. The first one is God knows the best way to go through life and that's why he gives us his laws so that we don't have to suffer through consequences of bad things happening to us. And God knows the best way to guide us through life and when we follow those laws, we have the best shot of making it through without anything unnecessarily bad happening to us. There's a better way to go through life. And there's a second way to look at that as an encouraging reminder that whenever you follow God's laws, whenever you follow his guidance, 
whenever you invest any part of your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength in honoring him, no matter what the consequences, it's going to go well for you. God is going to be good to you. Or say it another way, you'll never end up feeling disappointed for doing that. And how do we know that? Because God never got tired of loving you. And he had his chances to give up. He had people pushing hard against him, just like we do. People who made his life difficult because he just wanted to follow the will of his father. There were a lot of challenges that came rushing at him, especially as we get closer to, to Holy Week, the, the last week before he died on the cross. It was a busy week for him. And threats were coming from every direction. And then, of course, there's the weight of sin that weighed him down. Not his own, but ours. And you think of just how heavy your heart is and how tired your heart gets when you see your own weakness put into practice. And you multiply that by all the people in the world, not just who are living now, but who have ever lived. And you put that weight on the heart of Jesus. And not even that was enough to stop him from being good to you. Good to you. So that whatever your obedience to him has looked like today, you could rest in the assurance that he will always be good to you. And then after resting in that assurance, you would find strength to get back up on your feet and start all over again as the redeemed, loved, forgiven child of God you already are because God never gets tired of being good to you. But for now, rest well tonight, my friends. Rest well in knowing that God will always be good to you.